I want to thank you for, uh, as the cow uh, said to the farmer on the cold morning, thank you for that warm hand. <laughs> well, um, I would be remiss if I did not lend my voice to the uh, chorus singing the praises of Brian Dippy. <laughs> I know how Jody Young and, and how Will James felt uh, studying at the feet of the Master when you study at the feet of Brian Dippy. Um, while Charles M. Russell's artistic reputation rests on the West, on rough and tumble cowboys and buffalo hunting Indians, also sprinkled throughout his ovure are lithe fairies. Stalwart knights, gossamer clad come hither women, Egyptian dancing girls, talking animals. Bevy, a bevy of strange gnomes stood guard outside his Lake McDonald cabin. He met another cast of unusual characters on the movie lots of Hollywood on his half dozen winter visits to California in the early and mid 1920s. Visits that yielded make-believe images, uh, some of which garnished his letters to friends uh, back in Montana. Russell was ready for prime-time Hollywood in, the in 1920, if not for California. After all, Russell had been playing make-believe roles uh, all of his life. Whoops. He, within two years of uh, coming to California, uh, produced a work that had a strange resemblance to uh, this painting by Charles Wilson Peel, the artist in his museum. Russell uses the same gesture to raise the curtain on a different kind of experience. Charles Wilson Peel was, of course, uh, raising the curtain on ignorance uh, by introducing people to um, uh, his museum. Uh, Russell was introducing an audience uh, to a cast of characters, not coming from stage left or stage right, but rather coming organically from literally out of the earth, uh, Missouri River Basin, uh, with Square Butte in the background. Russell had constructed a personal landscape, a landscape that uh, you all undoubtedly recognize here since it uh, happens to be in the McKay collection. It was uh, given to uh, Malcolm McKay for their Russell room in Tenafly, New Jersey in 1922. In Hollywood at that very moment was another man who would make a uh, an impact by uh, virtue of uh, exhibiting his uh, personal landscape. His name was John Ford. Uh, he was not the great director that he uh, would become. And I'd like to think that Charlie Russell had uh, something to do with um, John Ford's ascendance uh, to uh, prominence as a director in the way that he used the landscape and his characters. Ford admitted as much when he said, when I did the searchers, I used the Charlie Russell motif. Russell's paintings would become storyboards uh, for John Ford. Um, by this time, uh, movies had uh, been a part of American life uh, since uh, 1903, uh, when the Great Train Robbery, the first movie with a plot, a Western, uh, was made in New Jersey by Edwin S. Porter, uh, made the same year uh, Russell uh, traveled to New York um, for the very first time. In his career, Russell would produce scenes enough to fill storyboards for Western movies uh, in a variety of genres. Russell did romance. He did comedy. He did pathos. He did drama. 
And he did action worthy of a cliff-hanging serial. Such works were sometimes drawn from experience, but more often from a fertile imagination. Taking an overview of Russell's work, one soon realizes that although the West was his strong suit, Russell's body of work was nothing if not versatile, and uh, having the catalog resume at hand and being able to look through uh, 4,000 plus uh, images is really gives you an appreciation for the um, for the versatility of the artist and the subject matter that he embraced. And from the beginning, works of make believe and fantasy abounded. They took uh, the form of talking animals. This the great game for the rulership of the world. Supernatural figures imagined from Native American mythology. Uh, early representations of good and evil. Those gossamer clad uh, women that I was uh, telling you about, representing nature. And then a whole host of uh, mythical characters from um, the past, including knights and fools and beggars and dwarfs. The gnomes that uh, guarded his cabin on Lake McDonald, fashioned from natural materials. And Russell often caricatured himself, creating, creating himself as a, his own cartoon-like uh, character. Role play was uh, Russell's forte in life as well as art. As an adult, he imagined himself as a confident frontiersman in this when I was a kid, done in 1905. But as we know, Russell was no Kit Carson, but rather a neophyte helper to a Montana market hunter in a rapidly changing landscape. You see by his outfit that he is a cowboy for to be. He was content, he was content to be a night hawk, never a top hand, except when it came to art or humor. He sometimes took on roles at uh, events like costume parties. Here in 1887, he and Phil Weiner dress as husband and wife uh, at the Labor Temple event in Helena. The artist is Indian, taking photographs for use as painting references. Russell seated in Indian costume in his uh, first home in Great Falls, smoking an Indian pipe and posing as an Indian hunter, all in the interest of his art. For such works, uh, he developed an art studio that, like a movie studio, was filled with props and wardrobe. Additional evidence that he uh, utilized uh, these characters that he would adopt uh, here, uh, artist as hunter, both native uh, and white, uh, again done in the interest of his uh, work. Ever the clown, Charlie was always ready to entertain an audience, friends and close acquaintances. By this time, 1905, when this uh, image was done, uh, he had been exposed to the wonders of vaudeville and the stage, both in Great Falls, where he went to performances of traveling uh, vaudevillians, uh, to traveling troops along the Great White Way in New York. Russell is storyteller, sometimes combined with artistic creation, could always draw a crowd. I like to believe that uh, he had an impact on the Will, way Will Rogers' act developed. And I'll talk about that in, in a moment. Russell himself seems to have picked up an artistry with a rope, either as a cowboy, but probably uh, aided by uh, his exposure to Oklahoma-born vaudevillian Will Rogers, whom he met in New York City. With age and experience, Russell likewise became uh, experienced in self-representation. While still a cowboy, he demonstrated a knowledge of the value of self-representation when he was photographed wearing fringed buckskins, a garb long symbolic of an experienced frontiersman, which he was not. 
from Boone and Crockett to Cody, Custer, and Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, he, uh, all of these figures adopted uh, the fringed buckskin jacket uh, as evidence of an experienced frontiersman. He was a cowboy, all right, but a bit player, a cowboy without cows. But by 1899, uh, his sense of self uh, was on the rise. He portrayed himself as a uh, confident uh, a cowboy in these uh, self-portraits. Um, he was casual, confident, and eccentric, ready to address the art world beyond the bounds of Montana. At the height of his career as an artist um, and an accomplished commentator, or he became an accomplished commentator and raconteur, uh, never taking himself too seriously in the process. As his career developed and he began to travel more widely, Russell was able to assume new and sometimes imagined roles without abandoning his core audience. He was a star no matter what the role or the costume. Russell was born and spent his childhood in St. Louis, as we all know, entry point to the overland routes to California. Uh, Russell's dreams of California became, uh, began long before he ever laid eyes on the Golden State. A romantic vaquero of the coast portrayed in Russell's drawing uh, here was a far cry from the cowpunchers he worked with on the Montana range. Perhaps an inspiration for his colorful sash even, although he later attributed it mainly to uh, the Matee. Russell encountered real California cowboys, or California-style cowboys, uh, on uh, uh, the Wyoming range. A few California outfits occupied the foothills and um, valleys of Montana's western uh, reaches. Get their gear and cowboy style differed from that of the Texans uh, to the east. Uh, this led to all sorts of cultural borrowing that's reflected in Russell's art and the development of uh, third style, uh, uh, sort of a northern plains uh, uh, type. Although their wages were meager, uh, style-conscious cowboys lavished their hard-earned cash on the best gear they could afford. They clad themselves in woolly leggings, colorful bandanas, they sporty, wide-brimmed hats, and so forth festooned bridles and saddles to achieve a distinctive uh, and often exotic look. Uh, Russell continued to identify as a cowboy long after his range days were gone, and he continued to pay attention to style, uh, especially on horseback. Russell traveled to the West Coast as early as 1901. Los Angelinos were introduced to the cowboy artist through a full-page article with a half dozen illustrations uh, on June the 9th, uh, 1901. Uh, Charlie and Nancy... Uh, spent uh, two weeks in Los Angeles on their way back from uh, Mexico. Uh, and um, um, he was again uh, the subject of news uh, reports in 1906. Uh, it was 1906 when he uh, uh, spent the, the, the two weeks. Um, in 1906, uh, the Los Angeles Herald reported their present visit to Los Angeles is purely for pleasure. They are thoroughly delighted with the city and predict a wonderful future for it. With him, uh, he has brought a few of his finest works, which are scenes from an Indian story published recently. There is a stamp of individual out, individuality to Mr. Russell's pictures that places them on par uh, with Remington's at once. Some critics have gone uh, so far as expressing their praise of the Cowboys' pictures to declare that they are even finer in conception than Mr. Remington's. Periodical articles or periodic articles continued to appear uh, in West Coast publications during the first uh, couple of decades of the 20th century. This is uh, typical uh, San Francisco Call, uh, Book Review um, uh, in 1911, um, illustrated with uh, Russell's works. Uh, Russell uh, 
uh, heard about California firsthand from his uh, uh, some of his old cowboy cronies who had moved out to California. Uh, his uh, fellow cowboy and sometime business partner, Con Price, uh, uh, the saloon owner, uh, Cutbreak Brown, uh, the cowboy poet, uh, Walt Coburn, uh, the novelist, uh, B.M. Bauer, and her husband, Bud Cowan, uh, had also uh, uh, moved out to California, either uh, part-time or permanently. Um, and, but it was time in 1920 for uh, Russell to make his uh, personal appearance uh, um, on the West Coast, and an article titled Plains Genius Visiting Here by James Willard Shields uh, in the L.A. Times heralded his arrival. Um, uh, Shields, of course, was a noted author and explorer, a uh, guide uh, to uh, Glacier Park. Um, as a young adult, he had lived at Fort Conrad, Montana, on the Marias River uh, in the 1870s and uh, early 1880s. Uh, he had written for some of the same publications as Charlie Russell had illustrated, uh, Forest and Stream, for example. Uh, he had written, uh, begun to write books in 1907 and eventually compiled uh, more than 37, uh, all on subjects that, with which uh, Charlie Russell was uh, very familiar. Charlie Russell was encouraged to uh, come west by uh, many sources, not the least of whom were artists that he had met, uh, artists and illustrators in New York, uh, in his uh, journeys there um, in 1903, 1904. Um, and uh, one of those uh, who was influential was, of course, Ed Boreen. Uh, he and Boreen uh, became uh, kindred uh, spirits. Uh, the um, letter here that uh, has Russell uh, looking at Boreen and, and envisioning him as an engine uh, wearing a white man's hide. Uh, the two had uh, exchanged correspondence and uh, would exchange visits, uh, Boreen uh, coming to Montana. And then when uh, Charlie and Nancy uh, come to California uh, by this time, um, Boreen uh, is married um, and um, living in Santa Barbara and introduces Charlie to the burgeoning uh, art community uh, in Santa Barbara um, uh, during that time. They uh, took walks together um, uh, every day. Uh, Boreen tried to take two. Charlie just generally took one. Uh, they spent uh, lots of evenings together along with the Frank Lindermans uh, at times, uh, and uh, they were invited to many of the same social occasions. Uh, but what really uh, inspired uh, Charlie uh, and Ed Boreen were their uh, storytelling sessions, uh, often uh, in the company of Will Rogers. Uh, Lucille Boreen recalled one visit saying, quote, they told stories before dinner, during dinner and after dinner. Far into the wee hours of the morning, there was no drinking and no off-color color stories. They were just like little boys. I went up to bed and at 3 a.m. came down to find out if Ed intended to sleep at all. The three were amazed to learn what time it was. They had lost themselves completely in their storytelling. They smoked Bull Durham rolling their own and next morning tobacco was inches thick on the rugs. Boreen, of course, portrayed cowboy uh, or California vaquero culture, uh, usually in watercolor uh, and etchings. Uh, he idolized uh, Russell's work so much that uh, he claimed to have ceased painting in oil because he never thought he could achieve what Russell achieved. Uh, the pair uh, collaborated on uh, two or three model uh, horses, Russell uh, modeling the horse and uh, Boreen uh, creating, uh, in this case, uh, somewhat later, uh, the um, miniaturized uh, vaquero gear uh, to go uh, on it. Another of the artists that Russell uh, encountered uh, in New York uh, was the Californian Maynard Dixon, shown here about 1895. Uh, Dixon was uh, ranch raised. Uh, he uh, pursued cowboy and Indian subject matter, although he would 
and rapid course uh, move away from that uh, uh, later on. Both men wore sashes and stetsons. They added glyphs to their paintings, uh, Russell the Buffalo Bull uh, Skull and uh, Dixon uh, the Thunderbird. And uh, although they were never especially close, uh, they exhibited uh, together on at least uh, one occasion. Uh, Russell visited uh, San Francisco and uh, Dixon visited Montana. Um, Russell's visit in 1924 uh, to uh, uh, about 19, or between 1924 and 1926 um, inspired uh, Dixon's wife, Dorothea Lang, to uh, take the photograph of, of his hand. <coughs> Uh, and also another, I think you'll probably be hearing more about this uh, tomorrow from uh, Larry Peterson, uh, but uh, also Charlie Russell's head and partial profile, the hand holding uh, the cigarette. Um, she uh, remembered later that uh, uh, what she really remembered was the easygoing conversation that took place between uh, Russell and Dixon, but it was a serious conversation, and it did not include uh, her. Um, but uh, uh, nevertheless, it was an, a moment that she never forgot. Uh, Dixon was doing work like this uh, in the early 1920s, uh, but he had already rebelled against illustration uh, and representation um, about lying about the West. His famous quote uh, is one reason why he left uh, illustration in New York to return to, uh, to uh, California. Um, and... Uh, and yet he and uh, Russell uh, got along uh, well. By 1920, the movie industry in California was huge. About 160 companies uh, employed uh, some 10,000 people, um, distributed, uh, produced and distributed uh, hundreds of uh, reels of uh, film uh, annually. Um, and uh, Russell was almost immediately plunged into uh, the milieu of, uh, of Hollywood, and he took uh, right to it. Uh, to show him the way, he had uh, people like uh, Chewing Gum Bill Rogers, as, uh, as he uh, liked to call him. In the summer uh, of 1904, Rogers uh, was uh, performing on a midway in a Wild West show uh, inside the fairgrounds in St. Louis, in the St. Louis Fair. By 1905, uh, he was in vaudeville in uh, New York and uh, in short order uh, was soon had parlayed his uh, rope spinning act into a gig with the uh, Zigfield Follies. Uh, and as he refined his uh, technique, he began as a rope spinner. Uh, then he began to tell sort of stock jokes. Then he began to take the audience into his confidence. And this is where I think he, he learned something from Charlie Russell's um, example, the way that Russell could work on a piece of wax and still tell a story and keep people enthralled. I think he saw that example, and it may have uh, impacted uh, his own style, for it certainly uh, developed uh, between that 1905 uh, and 1918 period. Uh, when uh, he starred in his first uh, film, uh, Laughing Bill Hyde, and was signed uh, to a contract um, with the Goldwood Studio. Uh, 1919, uh, he, uh, Will, had moved his family to Los Angeles uh, and made, uh, in two years, a dozen films uh, for uh, the Goldwyn Studio. Uh, that same year, 1919, he bought one of Charlie... Charlie's buffalo hunting paintings, one of uh, many that he would acquire over the years. Um, Russell visited the sets of at least two of um, uh, Will Rogers' movies, uh, doubling for Romeo, uh, the first, and A Poor Relation. Well, actually, The Poor Relation was first, April of 1921. Um, uh, this shows uh, Russell relaxing with uh, Rogers uh, on the uh, set, and uh, the uh, photograph on the left is a scene uh, of Will Rogers uh, in, this, uh, in this film. Uh, the following year, um, Russell uh, or Rogers played a bashful cowboy 
uh, and doubling for Romeo. Uh, publicity for the picture said, quote, in this picture, Will Rogers and Will Shakespeare join in hands. You can imagine the rest. Close quote. Now, interestingly enough, there was an ad for this film in the Great Falls newspaper on April the 2nd after it had been released, uh, and it's the only place that I know of where uh, this particular ad appeared, and it contained a brief narrative titled, Will Rogers and Charlie Russell, played at the Liberty Theater, one of several theaters in Great Falls. Uh, the story noted that the previous winter, 1921-22, when Will Rogers was making doubling for Romeo, uh, uh, he um, invited uh, Russell to the set and, quote, being great friends, both cowpunchers in the range days and both being possessed uh, with a great or uh, with a keen sense of Western humor, uh, one day this pair were having lunch with Douglas Fairbanks uh, when he was making The Three Musketeers. Rogers was describing some of the uh, stuff that he was uh, working up for uh, doubling for Romeo, and he remarked that he had never used makeup, but said that it was uh, uh, Im important that he do so, necessary that he do so in his characterization of Romeo. It would be pretty hard to make that face of yours look like anything, Bill, Russell observed. <laughs> would you like to see what you could do with it, Rogers replied. Sure, said Russell, I certainly can't make it look any worse than it does naturally. <laughs> so the next morning, Russell was out early on the Goldwyn lot, and in 10 minutes' time, Rogers was coated with a full regalia of lip rouge, eyebrow pencil, and lash drops, whatever those are. Uh, how the cowboy artist ever learned to do this kind of art is still a mystery, but Lon Chaney, the man of a million faces who was making another Goldwyn picture on the nearby stage, said he couldn't have done any better himself. It was a tough job, Russell said later. Bill wouldn't stop chewing gum and kept springing his wisecracks. It made me dizzy trying to hit the right place with the lipstick. <laughs> and once in a while, Bill would try to take a bite out of it. Well, you can see at the top left... Uh, uh, if you could see that up a little closer, you could see that there's pretty heavy pancake makeup uh, as uh, Will Rogers uh, as Romeo. Uh, Russell would make uh, Will Rogers uh, a model in one of his equestrian figures uh, called the Stranglers. Um, he uh, uh, had Rogers sit for him for this uh, particular uh, painting uh, capitalized upon Rogers' well-known roping skills. Uh, he also produced, uh, eventually produced an equestrian figure in uh, bronze, uh, Will Rogers, uh, on uh, his horse, uh, Teddy. March 19, 1924, uh, Russell turned six years old, and Nancy, with the help of Will, threw him a surprise birthday party. Uh, Jody Young uh, reported uh, that Rogers, quote, kept the crowd rolling and laughing until they were weak. Uh, he gets $1,000 per performance as an after-dinner speaker. So at that rate, the bunch got here got about $10,000 <laughs> worth of wit and humor for nothing. Uh, Rogers was, uh, uh, had changed homes uh, from Beverly Hills uh, to Santa Monica during this uh, period of time. Uh, and... Uh, um, Charlie Wars Russell and Nancy were invited uh, to his home there, of course. Uh, he reported to uh, Ed Boreen that they had had supper with the Rogers a few days ago in their log cabin. Any of you who have been up there know it's not just a log cabin. Uh, another uh, important uh, contact that uh, Will uh, made, or uh, Charlie Russell made, uh, was William S. Hart a stage actor turned movie cowboy. Um, it was one of his uh, closest relationships. Uh, Hart began, of course, as a Shakespearean actor. Ollie Carey, the wife of uh, Harry Carey, called him a hopeless ham uh, as an actor, um, but uh, he made an easy transition to uh, a king of the cowboys, at least of the early silent movie uh, genre, uh, writing, uh, directing, and acting in many of his uh, movies, 
always uh, stressing uh, authenticity uh, as much as he could. Um, he met William S. Hart, uh, Russell did, in 1902 as they were tra traveling through uh, Montana with a play called The Christian, performed in the great or Grand Opera House in Great Falls. Uh, they had later uh, took a ride together, and that sort of further cemented their relationship. And when Russell, uh, the Russells came to uh, New York in 1904, Hart took them to Long Island, where he introduced them to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, by um, um, they kept in touch uh, over the years, and uh, and in March of 1919, uh, only six weeks. A trip to the West Coast, uh, Great Falls residents uh, Johnny Hagginson and his wife uh, took with them a letter of introduction from Sam Russell, uh, which they promptly presented at uh, William S. Hart's uh, Hollywood studio. Uh, they got right in, became a part of the cast, and made a cameo appearance in a rodeo crowd scene uh, in a uh, um, film called uh, The Money Corral. Uh, later, uh, Russell would uh, uh, paint, uh, or before that, Russell had uh, created a, uh, his own flattering equestrian uh, appraisal of William S. Hart uh, in uh, 1908. Uh, here are some of uh, Hart's uh, uh, presentations uh, in film. Um, Russell and Hart uh, actually on the set. Um, the Toll Gate was one of the films that uh, Russell um, uh, viewed uh, Hart uh, acting in. Um, Russell mentions about uh, four or five um, actors more than once in his uh, correspondence, and they seem to be the ones that he was most drawn to. Uh, Tom Mix came in for his uh, share of... Uh, um, jibes from uh, Charlie Russell, uh, for Russell had known him earlier uh, as a uh, knockabout uh, cowpuncher sometime. He said, I knew Tom Mix when he owned a saddle and a pair of spurs, and if you'd asked him where Hollywood was, he wouldn't have known if it was a line camp or a state. Um, Russell thought Tom Mix was, uh, he called him a regular man. That must have been high praise. Uh, and was glad that he had, uh, uh, quote, got the coin, close quote. Uh, apparently he did because he was dressing much better than he did uh, on the range. He was performing in uh, movies primarily as uh, in a daredevil role. He, uh, uh, the films had begun to change in the 1920s to emphasize more action, and this sort of uh, put uh, William S. Hart in the decline, but, Char uh, but uh, Tom Mix in The Ascent. Uh, he was playing in the Daredevil when the Russells were in, uh, uh, or shooting the Daredevil when the Russells were in town. Uh, the Daredevil said uh, Photoplay magazine has action, humor, and it has stunts. The picture gives Mix plenty of opportunities for landscape gardening, that is, the breaking up of scenery. And he doesn't have to emote in this. We, once we saw Tom Mix emote, and we shall never forget it. <laughs> Uh, Harry Carey Sr., uh, another of the inner circle of, uh, uh, that Russell developed in uh, California, had been born in the Bronx in New York City. Uh, his father was a judge and the president of a sewing machine company. Uh, Harry went to a military school and had a, uh, uh, an appointment to my alma mater, but turned it down to be a playwright. Uh, he was at first uh, successful, and uh, then uh, success uh, waned uh, uh, until he met uh, director D.W. Griffith in uh, 1911, uh, and he began to make uh, films. Um, Carey uh, would ultimately go on to uh, help uh, a young uh, actor who wanted to become a director uh, named John Ford uh, get his first directorial job. Uh, his payback in the 1940s when Carey died, um, John Ford would de dedicate uh, the Three Godfathers film uh, to Carey, calling him the bright star, uh, a bright star in the western sky. In time, Carey uh, 
became a popular uh, Western uh, figure, uh, sometimes writing and directing. He appeared in about 233 different films and short features in a very long career of uh, 40 years. Uh, the Cary Ranch was a retreat for uh, Russell, uh, this homestead that Cary had uh, uh, established near Saugus, California, about 40 miles from Los Angeles uh, in 1916. Um, had uh, uh, a uh, home and several uh, different outbuildings. It uh, contained the Harry Carey Trading Post, which was a tourist attraction that employed uh, Navajo uh, Indians and other performers. Uh, which hung around a store that sold Western and Indian curios, uh, um, and the ranch was uh, occasionally used uh, for uh, filming. Uh, Russell was a guest at the Cary Ranch, became fond of the actor and his family, uh, who returned uh, the compliment. Here you see the uh, trick roping session uh, at the ranch in uh, 1921. Another uh, shot showing uh, Charlie wearing uh, Harry Carey's uh, hat. Uh, on his visits, Russell stayed in this uh, adobe cabin. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. It's probably washed away uh, in a dam break. Um, and according to uh, Harry Carey uh, Jr., uh, quoting uh, his aunt, uh, Russell is said to have painted uh, quote, a mural down there in that cabin, uh, and he had it stretched on the floor, close quote. And he's probably referring to some studies or uh, some work that he was doing, uh, perhaps on the famed Doheny mural that we'll mention in a few moments. Here, uh, Russell joins Harry Carey and his son, uh, Dobie Carey, uh, sitting there, who would become a, a famed uh, actor, part of the John Ford uh, Film Company, as it was called. Uh, Russell made him a special uh, model uh, goat, uh, which became, which was christened Dobie's goat. I've already mentioned uh, the relationship, uh, or at least the visit uh, to Douglas Fairbanks on the set of The Three Musketeers. Uh, Russell was uh, close to reasonably close to uh, Fairbanks and his wife, Mary Pickford. Um, and uh, uh, he later created uh, a sculpture uh, and uh, sent an illustrated letter uh, commemorating um, the uh, role of D'Artagnan that uh, Fairbanks uh, was playing when, Russ, um, when Russell uh, went to the studio. In a letter, he urged Fairbanks not to forget, quote, our old West. The old-time cowman right now is as much history as Richard the Lionhearted or any of those gents that packed the long blade and had their cloths made by a blacksmith. The West was, one, was a big home for uh, adventure, the adventurer, good or bad. He had to be a regular man. And in skin and leather, men were almost as fancy and picturesque as the steel-clad fighters of the old world. Uh, Russell knew how to paint a picture in words or with paint. Uh, of course, Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford visited uh, a Russell exhibition and uh, purchased an oil painting called the Navajos. Um, this is owned by the Desert Caballeros uh, Museum in Wickenburg now. Uh, they spent $3,500 on it. Uh, there's the uh, local story that each one uh, tried to buy the painting for the other. Uh, as a surprise gift. Among the bit players that uh, uh, Russell hung around with more often uh, than you might think were uh, minor actors, uh, Neil Hart, uh, who uh, had begun his career as a real cowboy with the Miller Brothers 101 Ranch and then uh, became part of their Wild West uh, show um, and um, began on the lot that the uh, Miller Brothers established near Santa Monica in 1902. Uh, he was born on Staten Island, and his film career uh, lasted from 1916 to 1949. Uh, he appeared in uh, 125 different movies. Probably never heard of Buck Connors, who made 85 films, almost exclusively westerns. This Texan was uh, 
first in films in 1913 with the, the famous but now forgotten The Burning Lariat. And his last uh, uh, he made in 1941 as Underground Rustlers. By this time he was playing a lot of sidekick roles, people like Bob Steele. One of the, uh, uh, another of the, um, of the inner circle of uh, Charlie and Nancy Russell was uh, Charles, of course, Charles Lummis, the former editor of the Los Angeles Times, uh, uh, the author of the, the novel Land of po Poco Tiempo, uh, and the founder and editor of the magazine uh, Land of Sunshine, which was later known as uh, Out West Magazine. Uh, Loomis was moved when he first saw Russell's uh, work uh, at uh, Russell's Pasadena home in one of Nancy's uh, uh, exhibitions. He said, quote, I was not prepared for the splendidly alive paintings I saw at your house. So virile, so true, so full of imagination, as well as fact, the poetry as well as sanity. Nobody in the West touches you as a painter of such scenes, nor do I know of anyone anywhere painting western horses and landscapes as you were doing. Those pictures have a distinct historical value as well as high artistic merit. Uh, Lummis uh, had helped further the careers of um, Maynard Dixon and Edward Boreen and countless other artists and writers. Um, he and uh, Charlie became a close, uh, uh, like Russell, Lummis wore a sash. Uh, they were close to the same age, a uh, few years apart. Um, and uh, Lummis introduced Charlie to um, many more people than they might have met uh, through his uh, salon style entertaining uh, at his home, El Alasal. Uh, it was sort of a bohemian gathering place. Uh, you, you would find uh, uh, people from a variety of different uh, walks of uh, life uh, in the arts, uh, in literary circles, uh, and the like. Uh, Charles Lummis appears here uh, with uh, Nancy and Charlie and an up-and-coming actor named Harold Lloyd. Um, uh, Russell met many actors that he did not uh, mention in his correspondence, including people like Wallace Berry. Um, Harold Lloyd uh, never made a more than a cameo appearance uh, in uh, Russell's work, but he admired uh, uh, Russell's uh, use of sign language, which after all in the silent movies, you know, emoting and uh, uh, expressing oneself uh, uh, with the hands was uh, an important aspect of uh, communicating. Among those at uh, Lummis's house was the novelist uh, Eugene Manlove Rhodes, who, like uh, Russell, had been uh, a cowboy only uh, in New Mexico. Um, he had become a novelist, uh, aided by Lummis again. Uh, his uh, novel, Good Men and True, was made into a film uh, in 1922 uh, when Russell, uh, and, uh, the Russells were uh, coming to California. Uh, Rhodes is among uh, this a group called the Four Ranny Hands. Uh, in this photo, uh, Harry Carey, uh, Fred Stone, and Charles M. Russell create the uh, quartet along with uh, Rhodes. Um, Russell also uh, met Charlie Seringo, the famed cowboy detective uh, and Pinkerton uh, agent um, who was um, uh, temporarily residing uh, in Southern California. Uh, but had a terrific uh, reputation as a character of, of the Old West. I asked Brian Dippy uh, if, uh, if uh, he knew if Russell ever met Wyatt Earp, who was also living in L.A. at the time, and um, there's no indication perhaps that he did, but uh, I think one might uh, uh, think that uh, someone, though, though two people that famous, must have run into one another at some point. And then there were the acolytes, uh, uh, Will James and uh, Jody Young. Uh, they looked to uh, Charles M. Russell for inspiration and approval. Uh, both would uh, have uh, careers as uh, artists uh, and also uh, in films. Uh, Will James uh, visited Russell's studio before he came to California 
He was Canadian by birth and worked in Montana ranches in the early 20th century. He was quite deferential to Russell, uh, as was uh, Joe DeYoung. Um, and uh, he was asking him uh, early on for, um, for advice. Uh, Russell uh, replied on one occasion, nobody can tell you how to draw a horse or a cow, James. You say you haven't used color much, but don't be afraid of paint. I think it's easier than either pen or pencil. And uh, Jody showed us that he wasn't afraid of paint, apparently. Um, he, uh, Russell went on to say, use paint, but don't get smeary. Let somebody else do that. You keep on making real men, horses and cows. Of course, the real artistic people uh, may never know you. But nature-loving, regular men will. Here, uh, James, looking over one of Charlie's recent creations. And uh, this is an interesting uh, letter that uh, um, was a response to Will James's, uh, out of the blue, asked Russell uh, how he thought the old-time cowpuncher would handle a three-headed dragon. And Russell said, hell, he wouldn't handle it. He'd get the hell out of there. <laughs> and his uh, illustration uh, backed that up. Of course, Jody Young, a uh, young Oklahoman, landed a job uh, uh, with Tom Mix uh, and contracted uh, meningitis uh, in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, it rendered him deaf at the age of 19. Uh, and he began to draw and sculpt sort of in his quiet world now. Um, he uh, learned of uh, Charlie Russell, and, uh, and he sent Russell a letter uh, with some of his work, uh, again asking advice. Uh, Russell responded kindly, as he did uh, to Will James. Uh, and uh, the next thing you know, uh, the De Youngs have relocated from Oklahoma to Choteau, Sh Montana, uh, and uh, have gone to see Charlie Russell in Great Falls. Um, they finally met about 1914, uh, and by uh, 1916, uh, uh, Ru Russell had invited De Young to do some working in uh, his studio and the pair. Uh, communicated uh, through uh, sign language, as you know. Uh, what you may not know is that they went to movies together a lot, and they uh, did their um, uh, movie reviews uh, and acted as critics with uh, sign language uh, as the film was going on. Like, that's terrible. Uh, the cowboy would not write like that, so on and so forth. Well, the beauties of the beach. As we all know, Charlie always had an eye for the ladies. And uh, in uh, um, his letters from uh, California, um, women uh, play an important, uh, if often scantily clad, role, uh, which was totally in keeping with, with his ovir. Uh, take uh, 1890, Casa Alegre. You can interpret the Spanish for yourself. 1895, Indian made the stockade, a smoldering picture if you look at it. Then, of course, something uh, a little more obvious uh, is just a little uh, pleasure series. Um, we all know that uh, he produced a bit of uh, pornography. Um, Waiting and Mad. Uh, based on some photographs he took of uh, Nancy, not happily, posing perhaps in costume. Russell uh, produced uh, a couple of uh, pictures based on his experiences at the Columbian Exposition and the Louisiana Purchase, Purchase Exposition, here street scene in Arabia uh, in 1908. Uh, there was this woman, Fritzy, who was... Uh, Apparently, the belly dancer that was working the, the show, uh, Russell couldn't help but have seen her, and it's probably her that is uh, perhaps his subject. Uh, he spent a lot of time discussing the dress or lack of thereof in, uh, among California women. 
uh, usually expressing shock, but I think that he protested too much. The skimpiness of modern female attire and the use of cosmetics uh, were uh, periodic uh, sources of his uh, barbs. Uh, he said that uh, every rag a woman was wearing uh, in uh, California, quote, wouldn't pad a crutch. Um, his puzzlement at uh, women's not uh, being uh, cold, uh, wearing so few garments, uh, uh, caused him to observe, uh, quote, a woman can go further with lipstick than a man can with a Winchester and a side of bacon. <laughs> Russell produced some... Uh, some uh, works that uh, don't, don't seem quite in, in character, but were undoubtedly influenced uh, water spirit uh, in these uh, drawings about 1920. Um, he, of course, uh, could have been uh, influenced by uh, painters who were uh, producing, uh, who had produced such works prior and were continuing to do so among uh, California artists. Uh, but I like to think that he was uh, influenced by um, uh, pictorial photography uh, that had a real foothold in Los Angeles and a, and a high profile and was connected uh, to the film industry. And one of the practitioners, uh, effective practitioners, was Ann Brigman, uh, an American photographer and original member of the photo secessionist movement. Uh, her famous uh, images of, of uh, outdoors, uh, naturalistic uh, content, uh, uh, women, uh, nymphs, uh, uh, cavorting in the surf. Uh, these are a few uh, examples. And then uh, there was the legendary Ten Commandments. Uh, the film producer uh, Cecil B. DeMille in 1923 transported a small army of uh, of uh, actors and technicians uh, uh, down uh, to northern Santa Barbara County on the beach and uh, had them build uh, the uh, uh, magnificent city of the Pharaohs uh, for his uh, silent epic, uh, The Ten Commandments. About this same time, you see Russell uh, come up with this uh, uh, little uh, model that was not uh, cast uh, into bronze, and he uh, also did uh, some uh, Egyptian uh, dancing girls, perhaps uh, influenced by uh, the publicity and actually going with Ed Borain uh, down to uh, see the set. Well, one of his most influential uh, efforts, of course, was uh, his uh, contact with uh, John Ford. Uh, 1924, uh, this picture of uh, Ford and Russell and James and Frank Spearman, the novelist. Um, Ford had undoubtedly uh, knew of Russell's work. Um, he uh, uh, had access to uh, publications, obviously, that Russell was uh, published in and also uh, prints uh, that were uh, on the market. And uh, Ford owed uh, more to Russell than uh, any other, um, uh, perhaps any other person uh, in Hollywood, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Russell was doing a uh, film in 1924, his first great epic called The Iron Horse. Uh, and Russell uh, produces a, uh, an interesting uh, picture called uh, Trail of the Iron Horse, 1924. Well, immediately I began to uh, search for a print of the Iron Horse in an effort to try to see if Russell uh, had actually replicated anything in uh, this film. Um, it, and I uh, was unsuccessful, although there was plenty about the film that was uh, Russell-esque. But uh, I came to believe through this uh, effort uh, that uh, the film was uh, connected to this painting, uh, When Shadows Hint Death. Uh, Russell had been interested in shadows for a long time. Uh, he created models, three-dimensional models, to experiment with how the shadows uh, fell to help him uh, in three dimensions work out two-dimensional painting 
uh, 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 details. Um, he uh, uh, recalled how vain a lot of cowboys were and that when they were riding along, they would sneak a peek uh, at their own shadows to see how gallant uh, they were in the saddle. Um, he uh, utilized shadows in this uh, uh, sunshine and shadow, uh, danger lurks, uh, uh, black humor obtrudes uh, in, this, uh, in this work. Uh, we've already seen a couple of images of cowboys resting in the shade. Uh, and uh, as Russell says here, uh, the mountains and the plains and sitting in the shade uh, seem to stimulate a man's imagination. Well, what I found out in looking through this film, and I would encourage you to go online and find uh, The Iron Horse and watch this marvelous movie. Um, it's uh, a brand new print has been released, and you can see the whole thing, no hassle. Only thing you have to endure is Portuguese subtitles. <laughs> now, I don't know why, uh, what the Portuguese had on this deal, but uh, just ignoring that, uh, watching the, I was watching this uh, with great interest uh, when uh, all of a sudden the scene came of the Indians stopping this, lo this, this train. Um, and there's this pause in the action as a group of Indians ride up on to a bluff. And then John Ford puts the camera behind them and the sun is behind them and it projects these shadows on these boxcars. And just exactly like uh, these shadows are projected on this canyon uh, side. And it would have been fairly easy for John Ford to have either acquired a print, which was the first publication of this uh, work, uh, or uh, it was published in Scribner's Magazine. Uh, so he could have easily adapted, and I think that uh, he certainly did. So watching this movie was, was great for a lot of different reasons to me, and I think it really did show the impact of John Ford, uh, or Charlie Russell on John Ford. Um, Steven Spielberg uh, tells a story uh, about going to John Ford's studio, either as a high school or a young college student interested in filmmaking and wanting to get the inside scoop on how to make a movie, a John Ford style. He admired his work so much. And uh, he sat uh, in Ford's office and asked the question. Ford had him stand up and walk around to the various paintings that were on the walls of Ford's studio office. They were Western scenes. And he had him point out where the horizon line was. Well, it's up here, Mr. Ford. Next painting, it's here, Mr. Ford. Now it's down here. It says, now you know how to make a movie. He had such an artistic sense uh, that may have been uh, natural, but may also have been uh, helped along by uh, Charles M. Russell. Uh, William Howes, uh, in his study of the impact of art on the films of John Ford, points out a compositional strategy uh, peculiar to uh, Charlie Russell among Ford's influences. Ford was influenced by a lot of Western artists, from Frederick Remington to Frank Tenney Johnson to Charles Schreibogel. He had their books in his office. Uh, they used to go through looking for uh, ideas. But one of the, uh, one of the uh, compositional uh, uh, effects that uh, Rus in, in Russell works uh, that Ford consciously used was to cluster uh, in the foreground uh, groups of, uh, of figures. We've seen some other great examples uh, of that um, um, throughout the day. Uh, this allows you to uh, literally put this group on a pedestal and focus your uh, energy on, on them, but also be able to see into the distance and continue to capitalize on that great depth in the landscape. Uh, he used this uh, idea in the searchers. Uh, she wore a yellow ribbon, a Fort Apache, uh, many of, the, of his uh, most popular uh, films. Uh, Russell, of course, admired a uh, stuntman. Uh, he, interestingly enough, denigrated uh, most directors. Um, he never mentioned Ford by name. 
Uh, he wrote uh, Bill Cheeley in 1924, uh, uh, quote, I used to wonder why movie writers always rode up or downhill, but I am wise now uh, that any, place, any piece of land that's level and big enough to hold your hat on in California is either a farm uh, and there's a nester hoeing it. So movies have to be made uh, or have to use that which is standing on edge, meaning uh, uh, a uh, cliff of, of some sort. Uh, he says, he went on to say, Carey, meaning Harry Carey, don't use a double. He's nervier than the rest. Uh, the director who has the only soft thing on the job finds a place where he can uh, balance, and then he picks out a hill that I wouldn't go near enough to throw a rock over. And there Mr. Director tells his bunch of no afraids uh, through his megaphone to come on off. Maybe it's coming off, but it looks to me more like they fell. Of course, they hit often enough to ease the fall with, any, with uh, the booze they are making these days. I can partly understand the punchers being fearless. But none of the horses I ever knew drank whiskey. Uh, maybe it was the loco, meaning loco weed, that makes uh, grass eaters foolish. Curry told me that none of his horses used booze, uh, but not to bet that way on his riders. In a letter to Dick Bodkin, a Montana resident who had become a stuntman, um, he told, uh, Russell told uh, Dick that he thought that their, uh, the source of their, uh, um, uh, there might be another source other than booze uh, to their bravery. Russell said, once an old engine told me that it wasn't the head that made men brave, it was the heart. If his talk was right, these movie punchers had an enlargement of the heart and shrinking of the head. I've seen them ride down hills that I wouldn't go down on a ladder. <laughs> I'm a, an old man now, but I still like to ride a friendly horse, but I don't want no movie director to pick the trails for me. <laughs> well, um, Russell's years in California did uh, impact his, uh, uh, his art. Uh, he uh, was always, uh, in some ways, painting uh, for the market. I think Nancy you know, helped him to see the light, uh, and consequently, there were uh, there was a, a plethora of uh, scenes uh, uh, evoking uh, Mexican and Spanish uh, California in the Southwest. Um, works like the High Trade, uh, or excuse me, Mexican Buffalo Hunters, High Trade of California. Mexican cowboy were all uh, uh, done uh, as a, uh, a means of, of selling uh, in uh, California and capitalizing upon California history. Took works that he had formerly set in the plains or mountains, and now uh, they were set uh, in California. Navajo trackers, uh, he had visited the Grand Canyon in 1916, uh, had seen uh, desert light, been exposed to the Navajos, uh, uh, and he uh, gave it a go, although uh, he would never quite uh, be uh, as comfortable uh, in these scenes uh, as he was uh, in uh, others. Sometimes he uh, was very close in his adaptation. Here you see Get Him Out of There, 1915. Uh, using this uh, ravine, or in the case of Vaqueros of Old California, the La Barranca, uh, with a, a California Vaquero uh, taking the place of an old uh, um, Montana hand. Uh, he also uh, uh, produced uh, more works uh, uh, related to Mexico. Uh, and here you see he's recycling uh, themes again. Uh, we've already heard uh, from our speaker, uh, Nancy Russell, at lunch, the story of salute to the robe trade, so I don't have to go beyond saying the $10,000 figure, uh, the, one of the highest prices ever paid uh, for a living artist at the time. Um, on several occasions, Russell exhibited his work along with other artists, uh, 1922, uh, for example, he showed with Carl Borg, uh, Frank Tinney Johnson, uh, Charles Austin at the Ebel Club in Los Angeles, 
uh, with works uh, on loan from the Stendhal Galleries. Uh, and in 1924, uh, he showed a buffalo hunting scene at the uh, first annual Painters of the West show at the Billmore Galleries. Uh, the Painters of the West was a short-lived uh, organization, relatively speaking. Um, and uh, 29 painters took part in this competition. Uh, they had 58 canvases exhibited, and their array of talent was uh, both national and international in reputation. Um, according to the uh, report uh, of the, um, of the, uh, on the show, uh, quote, the competition was primarily among the desert, the mountain, and the sea, and all three awards of the judges went to desert landscapists. Maynard Dixon, a veteran California painter, won first prize with his The Survivors, which was ironically a painting of bison uh, going out into the desert. Uh, the remnants of a herd... Um, uh, with an Arizona backdrop. That one first. Uh, Carl Oscar Borg, uh, another California painter, won second uh, with another Arizona desert setting called uh, Badlands, uh, painted in uh, Nevada and uh, also in Arizona. Uh, and third prize uh, went to George Townsend Cole. Interestingly enough, his uh, painting was called a Navajo Country, and he's shown here on the right in the cowboy hat, uh, posing with Will James and the uh, uh, legendary bad man Emmett Dalton. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, Cole was a modernist. Um, they said uh, that his, uh, Cole is distinctly modernist in conception and holding. He accentuates masses of color and gives impressions rather than details. About this canvas rages a controversy of antagonistic schools of painting. The ultra-modernists say it's admirable, and the classic school dismisses it with a de de deprecatory a shrug of the shoulders. The subject is a study of broken mountain country with a stream uh, flowing through the foreground. That Cole should have won this distinction while painters of the repute of Charles M. Russell, Frank Tinney Johnson, Jack Wilson Smith, William Wendt, Edgar Payne, and a half a dozen others should receive no awards has set the tongues of salon goers a wagging. If the decision had been left to the visitors, it is probable that the figure painters and those who painted the sea and the mountains would have fared better. Groups constantly gathered around uh, Frank Tinney Johnson's canvas picturing a stagecoach holed up by Indians on the Salt Lake Trail. The Buffalo Hunt by Charles, they say Charles Edward Russell, also found high favor with visitors. In fact, there was not a bad canvas in the exhibition for the uniform excell excellence uh, of this uh, work has never been um, surpassed here. Also uh, on view very soon thereafter uh, was Arthur M. Ha Hazard's portrait uh, of um, Charles M. Russell. Uh, Hazard had done a portrait of his wife for the previous show that I just uh, m mentioned. Um, this uh, painting, of course, in the uh, collection of the uh, Amy Carter Museum. Um, a few weeks um, uh, after uh, the Painters of the West show, the L.A. Times uh, critic Arthur Miller called Hazard's portrait of uh, Russell on exhibit at the Biltmore Gallery striking as a triumphant piece of por portraiture. Charlie Russell, painter and modeler of Western life and animals, is here just as we see him. Hazard has caught the characteristics which make of Russell's physiognomy something unknown outside of the West. The far-seeing eyes and the, under the heavy brows, the determined set of the heavily moder modeled mouth, even the falling lock of hair over the right temple is just right. The sharply decided contrast of the beautifully, or excuse me, of the brightly lighted cheek and the jaw against the darker background suits the masculine quality uh, of the sitter. Well, uh, this leads us to uh, the Epic uh, Commission, uh, which we're uh, probably all uh, familiar with. Um, it's uh, the swan song of Charlie Russell's. Um, he uh, um, 
acquires the commission, Nancy acquires the commission from uh, Edward L. Doheny, a prominent California oil man who's soon uh, swept up in the Teapot Dome scandal, uh, but nevertheless uh, uh, not only acquires uh, this work uh, produced for his uh, home, uh, but also uh, other uh, works, uh, Wolf and the Beaver, um, and uh, a, a sculpture as well. Um, it prompted uh, Will Rogers to quip that Charlie Russell was the only man in oil that remained pure. <laughs> and uh, Brian Dippy has uh, suggested that perhaps uh, the Old West offered uh, Edward uh, Doheny an escape from uh, his troubles. Um, I think that uh, the Old West always uh, found uh, Charlie Russell uh, an escape uh, for his troubles, and indeed uh, his troubles uh, were mounting, uh, and the end of the trail loomed in 1926. Thank you.